This is part two of chapter one, section one, describing and measuring motion. Part two is talking about velocity and motion graphs. The speed of transportation. The speed with which people can travel from one place to another has increased over the years. 1818, National Road constructed. The speed of transportation has always been largely limited by the quality of roadways. The US government paid for the construction of a highway named Cumberland Road. It ran from Cumberland, Maryland to Wheeling in present day West Virginia. Travel by horse and carriage on a roadway was at a speed of about 11 kilometers per hour. 1869, Transcontinental Railroad. After more than six and a half years of work, railroad tracks from each side of the country met in Utah, just north of the Great Salt Lake. Passengers could now travel across the United States by steam powered trains. A cross country trip took about a week at an average speed of 30 kilometers per hour. 1885, Benz tricycle car introduced. This odd looking vehicle was the first internal combustion or gasoline powered automobile sold to the public. Although it is an ancestor of the modern automobile, its top speed was only about 15 kilometers per hour, not much faster than a horse drawn carriage. 1908, Ford Model T mass produced. Between 1908 and 1927, over 15 million of these automobiles were sold. The Model T had a top speed of 65 kilometers per hour. 1936, Pioneer Zephyr introduced. The first diesel passenger train in the United States was the Pioneer Zephyr. The Zephyr set a long distance record traveling from Chicago to Denver at an average speed of 125 kilometers per hour for more than 1,633 kilometers. 1956, the inauguration of the Interstate Highway System. The passage of the Federal Aid Highway Act establishes the Highway Trust Fund. This act allowed the construction of interstate and defense highways. Nonstop transcontinental auto travel became possible. Speed limits in many parts of the system were more than 100 kilometers per hour. 1983, TGV in motion. First introduced in 1983, this French high-speed train now has a top speed of 300 kilometers per hour. On its route from Paris to Lund Lyon, it averages 152.6 kilometers per hour. As a point of reference, since this textbook is a little older, the fastest train right now is produced in Shanghai, and it is current top speed being 430 kilometers per hour. Describing velocity. Knowing the speed at which something travels does not tell you everything about its motion. For example, if a weather forecaster announces that a severe storm is traveling at 25 kilometers per hour, you would prepare for the storm. Storms usually travel from west to east. If you live to the west of the storm and the storm is traveling to the east, you need not worry. But if the storm is moving to the west, take cover. It is important to know not only the speed of the storm, but also its direction. When you know both the speed and the direction of an ob object's motion, you know the velocity of the object. Speed in a given direction is called velocity. If you know the velocity of which an object is moving, you'd know two different things about the object's motion, its speed and its direction. A weather forecaster may give you the speed of a storm as 25 kilometers per hour, but you don't know its velocity unless you know that the storm is moving 25 kilometers per hour westward. Air traffic controllers must keep very close track of the velocities of all the aircraft under their control. These velocities change more often than the velocities of storm systems. An error in determining a velocity, either in speed or direction, could lead to a collision. Stunt pilots make spectacular use of their control over the velocity of their aircraft to avoid colliding with other aircraft. These skilled pilots must have precise control of both speed and direction. Stunt pilots use this control to stay in close formation while flying graceful maneuvers. Graphing motion. You can show the motion of an object on a line graph in which you plot the distance against the time. A point on the graph represents the location of an object at a particular time. By tradition, time is shown on the x-axis and distance on the y. A straight line, a line with a constant slant or slope, 
represents motion at a constant speed. The steepness of the slope depends on how quickly or slowly the object is moving. The faster the motion, the steeper the slope, because the object moves at a greater distance in a given amount of time. A horizontal line represents an object that is not moving at all. To see examples of how graphs represent motion, read about the jogger and exploring graph motions on page 24. Exploring motion graphs. Motion graphs provide an opportunity to analyze changes in distance and time. The vertical or y-axis is used to show distance. The horizontal or x-axis is used to show time. Divide the distance by the corresponding time to find the speed. This graph here is showing speed. First day, start with enthusiasm. The jogger travels at a constant speed of 170 meters per minute. The graph of the constant speed is a slanted straight line. Notice that the speed is the same at every point on the graph. You can use the graph to analyze the jogger's motion. How far does the jogger run in 10 minutes? How far does the jogger she have to run to travel 680 meters? The second day, take a break. The jogger runs again at a constant speed of 170 meters per minute, but she takes a break after running 850 meters. The horizontal line shows the distance that she did not change during this break. Thus, there is no motion. What is the jogger's average speed? Third day, slow down. As on the first day, the jogger runs at a constant speed, but this time she runs at a slower speed, 100 meters per minute. Notice that the slant or slope of the graph is not as steep as it was on the first day. The steepness of the slope is related to the speed. The faster the speed, the steeper the slope. How far does the jogger run in 10 minutes on this day? 